Yeah, I know the workbench is a freaking mess right now, but I'm trying to get caught up on some stuff. This is a Definitive Technology Supercube Trinity that's been here way too long as usual. And I know I covered it in a previous video, maybe like a year ago. And I'm trying to get caught up on some of this stuff and get it back to my customers in a timely fashion as I possibly can. Anyhow, I went ahead and I recapped the entire low level board and the entire high level board in addition to changing the four output FETs. These are the, I think they're ST20WM50NDs, something like that. Anyhow, I bought a bunch of FETs, actually found them from a reputable distributor. I think it was Newark.com had them, or Farnell in, in any case. And I've got it reassembled. All the caps have been changed with the exception of these two uh, speaker coupling caps because the customer, I don't believe, uses the uh, speaker level inputs and outputs right here. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put some audio into it right here on my MP3 player. And it's going into clipping, which is perfectly fine. And I like that. But then I didn't change a thing and it backs down. And so what I've determined is over here on this little board right here. Now this is a little standalone board. Let me try to tip this up because this is live at the moment, so hopefully nothing shorts out. So on this little standalone board, I'm actually gonna just grab the chassis and try to slide everything over here. There is, on focus you fuck okay so there's this resistor right here labeled as r5 at least no no f4 i think it's a fusible resistor i can't make out the value on it but underneath this thing there is a thermistor uh, with some heat sink compound added to it and i'm pretty sure that's what's holding this thing back because Let's go ahead and lay it back down where you can actually see it. And where did my can of compressed air go? There it is. Almost empty, by the way. So you hear the audio level right now, right? So if I spray this thermistor, cool it off, you can hear it goes into distortion and then it quickly backs down. Now I'm measuring 0.3 ohms on this resistor and I think that's a little bit high for a finger quotes 2000 watt RMS subwoofer. I don't think it should be 0.3 ohms. Now I do have a schematic on this unit. I did obtain one. The customer actually got one from Definitive Technology and I'm just going to go ahead and try to, at the end of this video, post some stills of this um, schematic because it claims it covers the Supercube 1, Supercube 2, and Supercube 3, as well as the Trinity subwoofer. I can't find anywhere on the schematic where it references this little board right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I'm going to zoom in real close on this resistor and I'm pretty sure it's going to be orange, black, silver, which should be 0.3 ohms, but it, it just seems high. And they have this little uh, piece of foam that actually slips over the resistor, kind of like that, to thermally insulate it from cooling off too quickly. Anyhow, I went ahead and I pulled that off. Uh, let me zoom in on this and see if anyone else might have any ideas. But I believe I have this thing working perfectly with the exception of this resistor. I don't think it should be 0.3 ohms um, for the system. Now keep in mind that the manual does state, and I did find one line that said 20 ohms minimum speaker uh, impedance. And I do have this connected to two 8 ohm dummy loads, so 16 ohms right now I'm driving this thing at. And it easily, my Variax only goes up to about 5 amps, it easily pegs this thing at over 5 amps. 
And so that's only about a thousand watts of AC input at that point. Actually, that's only about 600 watts of AC input at that point at 120 volts. Um, and it does, you can look at the service manual for yourself, the different pages. It does talk about uh, these uh, main filter caps being a different value, whether it's a one, two, or three. This being a uh, Trinity uh, uses 2200 microfarad, don't know if you can see it, 2200 microfarad, 200 volt caps. There's two of them on there. So we've got about 320 volts going to these four FETs right here. And they are definitely generating some heat. They are getting warm. So let me pause this. I'll try to do a macro zoom on that resistor and see if anybody can recognize it or if anybody has worked on these definitive technology super cubes. I'm kind of stuck on this one. I'm asking you guys for help. If anybody can help me on this thing, what is the resistor value on this board? One moment, please. Okay, there is a semi close up view of the resistor. I believe it has been hot and it currently is hot because I'm driving this thing hard. And so uh, I'm going to try to lift this up and see. Actually, I'm going to turn the uh, volume down because this thing is really getting warm. I mean, it might be perfect. I'm not sure. I've had to iron out several bugs on this thing. Okay, focus. I'm pretty sure the first band is definitely orange on this this end right there. I'm not sure about the second band. I'm sorry if I can hold it still. Try to tip it up all the way. And there it is again, right there. Nope, too far. Sorry. So that's where I'm at, labeled R5. I can't find it in the schematic that the customer supplied to me. I don't know if I, I want to make sure this thing is 110% when I give it back to the customer. And I'm just having trouble with this. If anybody has any insight to uh, definitive technology, super cubes, please let me know. I mean, I've seemed to almost be the guru on these things, but I'm just a dumb arse that gets lucky a lot of times. So there is the bottom view. It did actually have heat shrink tubing over it to couple the thermistor to the resistor. I mean, is it gonna be, is it orange gray? That would be 0.39 ohms. That would be even worse. I'm thinking it should be in the 0.1 to 0.2 ohm range, but that's just me. But anyhow, I've got this customer's let me zoom back out, sorry about that. Here we go, focus should be coming. Uh, anyhow, I've got this customer Supercube Trinity. Uh, four FETs replaced. Um, I did go ahead and replace both of the driver ICs right here. Um, like I said, every cap on this board has been replaced. And once again, over my head as usual, <laughs> I always bite off more than I can chew. What can I say? I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, things working perfectly, but it does, it, it was shutting down and I think that's my fault because I was trying to drive this into a four or an eight ohm load and it specifically says 20 ohm minimum on this thing. Maybe it's perfect. Maybe those extra four ohms because I'm only using a 16 ohm uh, load right now and I'll show that to you right here if I can get the camera to swing far enough so there is the dummy load I have right there it's uh, two 8 ohm loads and then back onto this thing over here and did my mp3 player just die one moment please 
And I think unfortunately we just killed another FET because when I power this thing on now, that's all I get. Power on and it shuts down. Wonderful. Okay, another failure. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing at this point. Thought I had it going. It's been running fine for like two hours and then it decides to do this. Okay, well, let me disconnect the speaker leads and flip this thing over. There are the four FETs right there. And we'll get a voltmeter out and first I just want to measure the voltage on these caps. I still got 160 volts there and 160 volts there. Let's go ahead and discharge these things in the low impedance mode. This is the weirdest thing ever. This might be a failure. This might be a freaking failure. Let's go ahead and do them both at the same time. Because I believe these are the commons. Yeah, those are commons. Okay, let's just get this thing down to like 10 or 20 volts. Maybe something else failed. I don't know. Okay, let's double check both of these. So I've got five volts on that one and zero on that one. Okay, let's continue taking this one down. Okay, good enough. Um, we'll just put this in diode range at this point. No short there. No short, no short. Did it just get too hot? 0.74. Yeah, that's a problem, I think. We'll find out. So if this one reads 0 0.74, 0 0.396. Yeah, 0.74 and 0.396. 74 and 393. Okay, well, it's not the FETs. That's a good sign. So, what? Did it just get too hot? What, what the fork? Uh, well, let's try it again. Maybe it's just uh, me. Yeah, we'll just put it on there, that's fine. All right, power on, let's see what's gonna happen. And did it just power up successfully? Volume is turned down all the way. Start the MP3 player over. I don't think it's turned on the power supply yet. It takes about 30 seconds. Everything is connected. There's only these two leads. Yes, audio is going into it. I got nothing, nothing at all. But the FETs aren't shorted, that's a good thing. I don't hear the hum, normally there's a hum when it turns on the main power supply.
Yeah, still doing the same thing. Doggone it. All right, that's a failure. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. I've got so much time invested into this thing. <sighs> I may just have to uh, give it back. I'm not sure. Unrepaired. I don't know. We'll find out. Let me sleep on it a little bit longer. And we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, and here are the uh, schematics. I'll try to post each page for a few seconds. Thanks for watching once again. Bye-bye.